Steam Next Fest has happened once again. If you don't know, Steam Next Fest is an event hosted by Steam where hundreds and thousands of upcoming games have demos available. I've made videos in the past on every single Next Fest game I've gotten to play, and this time it's no different. Let's quickly talk about every single game I got to play during the Steam Next Fest. We have a giant wheel of demos to spin, and the first game it landed on was really simple golf. This is Jump King, but with a golf ball. It's what the title says. Really simple. You click a button and move your mouse to the side where the ball goes, and you shoot. There are hard obstacles that I couldn't beat because I stink, but the simplicity of a game like this is nice, and I see the appeal. It genuinely does feel like it will be a very hard game to play once you get further into the levels, because I was struggling with the third one, but I still really enjoyed it. It's a good game to start off with the next fest. Star Vaders is next, and it's the only game I've actually played in the past at PAX East, so I was excited to pick it up again. It's a strategy roguelike deck builder that has you play through three acts, with each act having you face waves of enemies. You have all these different cards that allows you to move your robot around, shoot obstacles, gain artifacts for buffs in the run. Genuinely, I, this game is incredible, and I think it's going to have so much potential once it fully releases. And inside of a run, if an enemy gets too close to you, you gain a doom point, and gaining five doom points will kill you in a run. The deck building aspect is great with a lot of variety and a lot of strategy involved. The graphics are incredible and the music is also on point. One of the games I'm really looking forward to once it's fully released, and I think this might be the best game out of the next fest and it's pretty early to say that. We next picked up a game called Yaw Knock, which is a top-down shooter with some roguelite elements. The graphics are pretty simple, but the gameplay was quite fun to me. You go through 10 waves per level, and after each wave, you can spend money to buy upgrades or enhance your weapon. The demo only had one level with 10 waves total, but it was generally pretty good. I do wish you could disable the slight screen shake that happens when you kill an enemy, but other than that, it was a simple and enjoyable top-down shooter experience with what seems to be a great amount of variety with weapons weapons and every weapon having its own unique ability that you can use and a good amount of upgrades. I'm excited for this one because it actually has a release date in November. Dimensionals is one of the games on this list that was already on my wish list because I saw it previously during some game showcase. It's a turn-based style tactics game where you have three characters in one single battle who can all hold multiple different skills. I'll admit the combat felt pretty good and the sound design and art direction is top tier for this game. The turn system is interesting as every turn you gain an extra mana which allows you to attack more or defend more, but every character seems to be able to hold any attack or defensive skill that they want. Between each battle, you can move around the items in your bag or the attacks and just give them to anybody. The game also does seem to have an endless mode with some more roguelite elements, but during the demo, it kind of sucked because I played it after the tutorial and fought a mini boss that had 600 armor and instantly killed me. I'm more interested in the story really with how the demo ended, so it's one game I'm looking forward to and it's also being released in November. Super Dash was next, and this one reminded me somewhat of Novadrift with the aesthetic, but it was much simpler. Your only weapon is dashing. That's it. You dash through enemies to kill them and get your dash streak higher. You can unlock upgrades mid-run that get used with your dash streak as you fight waves of enemies. It's pretty simple and I enjoyed my time with it, despite not being able to get past the first boss. You can enhance all the upgrades after a run to make them stronger, or even unlock enhancements and meta progression if you beat the first boss. It's a pretty simple game, but does offer some good upgrades and one you should check out if you like these little space shooters. With the Steam Next Fest happen, I usually just browse the games and find the ones that I want to play, but this time I decided to let anyone that was an indie game developer in my Twitch chat give me their game and I told them I would play it. And this is the first one of those games and it's Faunamorph. It's a Metroidvania that reminded me a bit of Biomorph with its premise. You have different animal abilities that act as your upgrades for the game. It's a concept I can get behind, but sadly the demo was a bit buggy with menus, bad enemy placements, and even a soft lock. It's the dev's first project on Steam, so I will keep my eye on it and support it if I can. But overall, I do like it with all the different abilities that you have, and it seems like there will be a lot to offer in this game. It's a bit disappointing with how the demo ended, but I know it'll get better in the future. The next demo is a game called Tilebreaker Next Level, which I was able to beat in 10 minutes, but the simplicity of a game like this doesn't need a super long demo to hook you in. The main objective is to destroy a board while an enemy shoots you. That's it. 
Each level you have three lives and you need to destroy X percentage of the board to win. I enjoyed it a lot and would love to see more weapons. The concept is simple and fun. Other Skin is the next demo we played and it's a Metroidvania that reminded me a lot of Returnal when I looked at it and the gameplay also reminded me of Returnal, which is a good thing, but sadly this game was very unoptimized and my PC doesn't even meet the minimum spec requirements apparently. But with that said, I did play it for about 40 minutes and did enjoy what I saw. It's somewhat like Biomorph where you gain your abilities from enemies that you kill and in the demo I was able to unlock multiple abilities with turning back time, a dash, a giant jump, and a grapple. It's a metroidvania I'll keep my eye on, but it definitely needs some optimization before I'd commit to a full playthrough. Now every Steam Next Fest I seem to always pick up a Horde Survivor game or two, and this next game is one of those, and it's Royal Revolt Warriors. I'll say, I wasn't impressed. First off, it looks like a mobile game to me, but that's not really a complaint, just an observation. My biggest complaint is that the game doesn't seem to stand out in a very saturated genre that has a lot of great games already in it. You have your different classes with different start and weapons with meta progression that gets more expensive the more you upgrade. It's a Horde Survivor game. I can see people getting a lot of fun from it if they're really into this genre and they've exhausted the other more well-known options like Halls of Torment or Vampire Survivors. But for me, this game wasn't really anything special. Maybe I'll pick it up one day if I get absolutely addicted to Horde Survivors. We'll see. Now, I may seem to always pick up a Horde Survivor in every Steam Next Fest, but I also like to expand my horizons a bit and try to play a lot of different games that I normally wouldn't play. And this next one was a puzzle game called Hogtie. It's a cute and simple game where your goal is to lasso a pig and bring it to the green and then you win the level. Each level has up to three stars to gain based on how many steps you take, and the game does offer different biomes with different environments which obviously probably increase in challenge. I'm not much into puzzle games, but Hogtie was well done and very creative with a lot of the puzzles and I even got stumped on one of them for a good 10 minutes. If you're reaching for a cute, simple puzzle game, this is one you will want to pick up, and genuinely, I think it's great and has a lot of potential. We played the Precinct next and it's another game I saw during a showcase a while back so it's been on my wish list for over a year. Safe to say I was excited for this one and it did not disappoint. The demo was only about 30 minutes long but in those 30 minutes it showcases how much you will be able to do in your cop life in the city. You go on car chases, stop bank robbers, write tickets for bad drivers, and even fly helicopters. The setup of this game reminded me of a classic Grand Theft Auto, but it played incredibly well and the music was also very immersive. I hope the release date for Fall 2024 is correct because it's one of the best games we've played so far, had literally no issues with it. I loved it. It's time to pick up another Metroidvania game that described itself as a precision platformer with Tutum. I added this game to my list because it reminded me a lot of Always Legacy and Always Awakening and I enjoyed those games a lot, but I was left more disappointed with Tutum. At its core, it can be a great great game, I will say that. Solid platforming with good challenges and a nice aesthetic to back it up. But the demo just felt really clunky. You died in one hit, which isn't that big of a deal to me, but I felt the death screen was a bit too long for how quickly you could die. On top of that, the one boss in the demo had to be fought multiple times because I would die in the next room over and the game would respawn me against the boss, which was kind of annoying. And lastly, the demo just kind of ended on a dead end it seems. It has some potential, but a lot of glare and negatives in this demo, but I hope I'll be able to play it again in the future and maybe see if it improves. Brave Escape was the next game, and this was the only game in this next fest for me so far that requires co-op, so I had to get my partner Kat to join me while escaping the mines. This game is incredibly well done and designed perfectly for a co-op experience. One player plays as Colin, who has a rope, and the other plays as Floyd, who is a robot who boosts Colin up for a higher jump. In the trailer, you can see both characters gain in new abilities, but for the demo it has one little ability each. The game is all about cooperation and genuinely a great time. I imagine it might not gain as much traction because it is co-op only, but I'd highly suggest it to anyone who's looking for a fun game with a friend. Next is a turn-based deck builder called Skogdal. Turn-based deck builders seem to be some of the most popular games right now and they are absolutely everywhere, and this one stood out to me because of the graphics. It reminded me of an old school comic book or a weird animated TV show. The gameplay on the other hand, it was pretty good, I'm not gonna say it was incredible, I'm not the most invested in deck builders, but can appreciate the simplicity that this one adds. You get 3 energy a turn and your cards can buff your defense, attack enemies, spawn friends that help you out, or even apply status effects. 
It has all the components to make a great deck builder game, and the music was also top tier. I only played it for about 30 minutes to 45 minutes because I have a lot of demos to play, but if you're a fan of deck builders, be sure to check this one out because I am definitely going to revisit it when I can. We next picked up a creature collecting game with volleyball as the main combat gimmick, and it's Beastie Ball. The demo was short and you only got to play two volleyball games, but the creatures will of course remind you of Pokemon, like every creature collecting game, and the combat was a little confusing, but I feel the more you play it, the easier it will get, like every game in the world. The main story will have you face other Beastie Ball coaches to raise your league rank to compete in a giant tournament. The premise is just fine, and the turn-based combat is something that I'll need to learn, but once I do learn it, I can see myself loving it a lot. But for the short time I got to play the demo, I did enjoy what the game offered. Next is a roguelite platformer that had clear inspiration from the classic game Tetris and its Tower of Nod. It may look simple, and I guess... It is kind of simple, but in Tower of Nod, you place Tetraminos on a level, and your goal is to climb to the top of the level while lava slowly rises with every piece that you put down. Really, this game is a lot harder than I expected, but I also stink at Tetris, so there's that. But almost every level can hinder you, and after every level is beat, you have a new block that has an ability that might help you or not help you, or just a basic block. The game does target a specific niche with Tetris fans, but I still found good enjoyment in the 45 minutes that I did play. Windblown is probably one of the biggest games on this next fest because it's the game made by Motion Twin, the creators of Dead Cells, and it's the next demo I played. I have played about an hour of Windblown before this because I got an early copy. The demo was okay, you got one biome you could clear in 15 minutes and it showcased the different characters you could play as, the meta progression and unlocks to keep the runs fresh with weapons and abilities. I have played past the first biome and I do like this game. It's a little early to say if I love it like Dead Cells, but it's definitely one I want to play more of. The variety is nice and there does seem to be a good challenge as the game progresses. And it's co-op, who doesn't love that? The Last Humble Bee is the next game we played, and it was kind of a mix between a top-down shooter and horde survivor with roguelite elements, and a small deck building elements as well. Graphically, I love this game. The graphics were one of the main things that pushed me into trying it. The concept of the game is you're the last bumblebee, and you need to activate four obelisks to get to hell, and if you die, you go back to purgatory. Inside the runs, you collect currency to buy items, and you level up from collecting XP from enemies you face. Enemies sort of just spawn everywhere like a horde survivor, and the level system is like it as well, but your dash, jump, and weapon can all have enhancements, and outside of a run, you can unlock meta progression and cards to add to your deck every run. There's a lot to say about this one in a short amount of time, but it's definitely one of my favorites from the next fest so far, and I'm really hoping that this game does well, because honestly, it was a lot of fun, and I look forward to the full release. Another game to talk a lot about in a short amount of time is Ballionaire, and it's the next game that we picked up, and it's a lot more of a pachinko-style roguelite than Peglin is, which is another game I love. But in Ballionaire, you have five shots to gain a certain amount of money, and after every shot, you can place down a new peg that can potentially earn you money. And after every five shots, if you gain the amount of money required, you get a relic-type item. I'll admit, the first run is kind of daunting with how many different effects there are to learn, and trying to find the right synergies can be a bit confusing, but after a few runs, I was starting to get the hang of it and started to love it a lot. There is a lot to learn, though, but it goes by very fast, and it's one of those dopamine-inducing roguelites that can just give you a giant number that makes you feel happy. Really, this is a roguelite you're not gonna want to miss. Dong Wu Odyssey is next, and I only picked up this game because it reminded me a lot of Darkest Dungeon, and it really had a lot of similarities while playing it. You take out four characters on a mission. They all benefit or struggle depending on placement, moves with similar effects like bleed, blight, a stress system, and a somewhat similar art style. And the game as a whole wasn't that bad in terms of gameplay, but there was a lot of mechanics that seemed out of place and mostly it was a gotcha style system. That alone turns me away from almost any game. Weekly challenges to gain currency and rolls with in-game currency you can buy with real money. I, I hate that. I'm unsure if there's any real money involved in Dong Wu Odyssey, but the game is tagged as free to play, so I assume there will be. With that, I will pass on this game 100%. Next is Garden of Witches, which reminded me of Cult of the Lamb with combat and initial trailers, but what I got with it was more disappointment. 
I'll acknowledge I think it does have some potential like every game on this list, but what I played was not super engaging. You go through different biomes with small combat rooms that reward you with skills, upgrades to said skills, and upgrades to your main weapon. That's not horrible, but the main combat weapon that you use most of the time just felt so boring and anticlimactic. The enemies also were kinda boring. The boss wasn't horrible, the one boss that I faced, but the runs I did just felt so unwinnable because of how weak the character was before the meta progression, which I'm also not the biggest fan of because it's just basic upgrades like more damage, more health, a little bit more speed, that type of stuff. I think this game could be great if it's fine-tuned a little bit more, but for now, I was more unimpressed. Next, we picked up a bullet hellish roguelite with Sequest Dungeon. It's your typical roguelite game. You kill enemies, and after every room, you get a slight buff to your character and have different rewards with skills, compel which are just buffs in a run, and a shop. It wasn't bad, but it felt a little bland in some areas, and I wasn't the biggest fan of being able to only have four components at a time. You had parts to buff your skill and the components for yourself, but having only four slots made the game feel limiting. I felt incredibly weak in the second area and while facing the first boss. It's not a bad game at all, one I will keep my eye on, but has a few small things to improve upon. Last Helion was next on the list, and I was excited for this one because it looked like a promising extraction shooter that I saw during the Convergence game showcase, but what I got was an unpolished mess with good gameplay. The core gameplay is fine. You go to a planet with a mission, you get the mission done, and you leave. That's fine. You fight enemies who are kind of stupid in the game and collect loot. I can get behind that. But the biggest issue was a lack of sound in almost every smaller task, and I was not a fan of the UI as a whole. Sound design is something I imagine is very hard to nail games as you want the sounds to immerse the player in whatever world they're in. And there's probably a lot of small sounds you need to get for such small tasks, like a player walking or even a sword being swung, and this game had none of that and I hated it. I think it needs a lot of work, but once it's polished, it should be a great game. Next is Wormhole, which genuinely may be the biggest sleeper pick in the next fest. It's basically Snake, but on steroids, and more of a high score based game where you play as a worm and you just want to eat everything. Your worm grows bigger the more you eat, which in turn makes the game harder. It's super fast paced and I'll say super easy to get hooked on. The demo only has one worm available, but the full release will have more worms and game modes. A perfect little gem to play on Steam Deck or Nintendo Switch. And a little side note, the last game we just talked about had very poor sound design like I said in its current state. But this game, Wormhole, was the exact opposite where the sound design is stellar. Definitely one of the best games in this next fest. Chicken with Robot Legs is next, and this is another short demo that I was able to beat in about 12 minutes, but what it showed wasn't too bad. It sells itself as a Metroidvania, and you play as a chicken with robot legs, and you're constantly moving. You have a jump, a slide, and a kick. It's a pretty simple concept that I feel was executed pretty well, but it didn't show a lot to get me fully hooked. It also hurt my eyes when the chicken was running and the screen was constantly moving, but the gameplay is there and I can see some people loving it. It kind of reminds me of Bit Trip Runner 2, which was a fun game to play like 10 years ago, so one to keep your eye on if you're a Metroidvania fan and you like these fast-paced games. Keep Driving is the next game we played, and it's one of the most popular titles in the next fest, and it's a unique one that kind of reminded me of the game Heading Out. Your goal is to get to your friend's house to play video games. You go from town to town, and between those, you have small road events that can take away your energy, car durability, and gas. It has some slight deck building inside of it with the small battles that you have in the road events, but it's pretty fun and unique. There's a lot of small things you need to worry about that can negatively affect your driver with tiredness, hunger, cold, and all of that can really impact your run and make you run out of resources faster. I do like this game and all the options it gives with money management for gas, food, giving you odd jobs to make more money, small little side quests with hitchhikers. There's a lot here, and I can see why this is one of the most talked about games during the next fest. Next, we have Ronnie's Climb, which is more of a simple game, and it's kind of easy to explain. It's just a platformer. You play as a moose, I think it's a moose, and you climb a mountain. That's it. It reminded me of a classic Game Boy game, and it had some charm to it. Simple and easy. You collect gems and gain a few power-ups from what I've seen in the demo. If you want a nice little platformer, this is a game for you. Now, this next demo is a little bit more off compared to what we've covered because it was an Apple Arcade exclusive and it's available on the Nintendo Switch, but it has a demo available on Steam now, and it's TMNT Splintered Fate. This game looked a lot like Hades with the isometric action hack-and-slash style roguelite, and of course, it played a lot like Hades. 
But with the short demo, I kind of liked it. I love that you get to play as one of four turtles and each has their own tools and weapons. It allows for some variety in the run, which is needed in a game like this because the runs could get stale if you have no variety at all. The combat felt just fine, but I do wish I could see my HP as a number inside the bar, but that's not a big deal. Meta progression was okay. You get a good amount of the dragon scale currency in a run for good buffs to make you stronger. It's basic meta progression really, but the gameplay still makes it a good time. I was unsure of it going in, but after playing it, it's safe to say it's a nice little TMNT game that most roguelite fans could find joy in, and I'll probably pick up on day one because it does have a November release. Next, we have a 3D Metroidvania game called Mazelia Echoes of the Past. Right out the gate, this game charms you with its graphics and soothing ambiance. The demo is pretty simple in some areas like combat and upgrades. You, you find the simple early game upgrades on Metroidvania with double jumping, dashing, and some weapons to enhance your arsenal. The combat is simple, the platforming is fine as well, but there's a lot of smaller minor fixes that will really enhance the game. But it's a demo, so I expect there to be a few issues here and there. The biggest thing was being very, very lost as the game is really vague. But that might not be really a game design issue and more of a skill issue. At its core, it's a very charming little Metroidvania that I enjoyed quite a bit and I'm excited to see the development process and how this one evolves. Next, we have another big game from the next fest and it's Streets of Rogue 2. I never really played the first one, so I wasn't sure what to expect with this. And I'll just say right out the bat, I did not really like it too much initially. In the best way possible, this game has way too many things going on for my liking. It was a bit overwhelming jumping into the game and seeing so many options with characters and worlds and skill trees. I do think this will end up being an incredible game and I will love it once I get into it a lot more, but for now, I might pass on this one. This second game apparently has added a lot compared to the original. I'll pick this back up when it fully releases and give it a more in-depth look, but for the demo, I wasn't super impressed but I'm willing to give it another shot. Next, we have another platformer, but this game is more puzzle-based with Photobia Tales from the Dark. It's a pretty simple looking game, but the puzzles and mechanics introduced in the demo showcase that it does have a lot to offer. I'll say a couple of the puzzles in the demo, mostly one was poorly explained with the mechanics of teleporting, which could turn people away into thinking the game will be too hard later down the line since it was a tutorial puzzle. But other than that, every puzzle wasn't too bad and easily solvable. Plus, when you died, it loaded very, very fast. There was a handful of different mechanics for you to learn, and they were all easy to learn. Photobia, a great underrated platformer from this next fest. Mainframes is next, and it's another game that I was really looking forward to, and I'll say my expectations were met. It's a very unique looking platformer game where you jump from window to window on a PC playing as a floppy disk. It has some small puzzles in there that make the platform and more challenging, and you can move the platforms around with the mouse so you're kind of making the level yourself. Really, I love the aesthetic of this game. The graphics are top notch. I don't really know what else to say. The demo was short and sweet in a game I'm definitely picking up on day one. And the final demo that I got to play was Symphonia. It was described as a precision platformer in the Steam tags, and in the very short demo that I did play, it showcased itself very well. The presentation was stellar, and everything about this game stood out. Animations were smooth, the platform and I did get to do was super fun and enjoyable, the mechanics introduced fit the game perfectly, it honestly felt so unique with the music combination and the precision platform platform and it, it combined very well and it was an incredible game to end the next fest on and one i am definitely putting on my wish list and buying on day one and that's over 30 next fest games quickly talked about i genuinely love the steam next fest as i find it's a great way to find a lot of incredibly underrated games and talk to the developers of those games if they're hanging out in twitch chats or lurking in the discussions page on steam i feel incredibly lucky to make content for a living to allow me to play so many great games in such a short amount of time every game covered in this is a game I could fully dive into and play. Of course, there are some games that I liked a little bit more than others because, you know, everyone has their own favorite genres. So here are my top five games from this next fest quickly. Star Vaders, The Last Humble Bee, Wormhole, Symphonia, and Mainframes. No particular order, but those five games, I'm really excited to hear more information about them or have them released soon. Thank you for watching this giant mess of a video on a whole bunch of indie games. I do genuinely hope you enjoyed it because I love making a video like this every single Steam Next Fest, but it is a lot of work. Extra special shout out to the people that support me on Patreon still. That extra support really means the world, so thank you for that. And thanks again for watching, and yeah, that's all. I'll see you next time.